which only will happen if you choose to look inside of yourself. No broken people can help others. The first life that you have to rescue is your own. Today we are talking about spirituality. I just can't get enough of my beloved rabbi, Abraham Tversky. I just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. And in this video, he will share with us his wisdom about spirituality and what it really means to be a spiritual person. He is a great storyteller and makes complex ideas to seem very easy and comprehensible. I have talked about spirituality and being mindful, living a conscious life several times before on this channel. And I will link to them at the end of this video. Now, without further ado, let's see what this wise man has to say about spirituality. I believe that we can look upon this as a wake-up call because I think that um, in the last uh, 40 years our lives have undergone a very significant change. Technology has made life comfortable and pleasurable, right? And it has taken many hardships out of life. I mean, when I was a kid, right, in the 1930s, life was not easy, right? This is exactly what is happening to the humanity in this modern day age. Technology rushes, forces us forward in the development of societies. But as human beings, as biological creatures, we cannot really seem to keep up with that development. The rate is too fast and our minds cannot comprehend that kind of a change, that kind of a transformation as fast as it's happening today. Physiological needs are met in abundance. But there's something that is missing. We feel empty inside and it's something to fill that void. Something that we don't have any clue of. And that something, as you probably guessed, comes within. But now life has become in so many ways so easy that we, are, we don't have the means for dealing with, with hardship. Right? So uh, what uh, I would like people to know is, look, we have the reality. Uh, but hardship is not fatal, right? When he talks about hardships in this matter, he means existential problems. Yes, we live in a comfortable era. Yes, we have food. Yes, we have shelter. But we, human beings, are constantly in a discontent state. And that's okay. That is the natural state of us, which is a prerequisite, if you think about it, for humanity's expansion and growth. You want to develop if you're content. You just need to focus that restlessness into the right direction. Mental hardships are very much harder to deal with. There's no one to guide us because people seldom analyze their own feelings and thoughts. And it's when you connect the rational thinking with your emotional feeling, can you really find true wisdom. So instead of dealing with hardships, people avoid them. People distract themselves with food, with technology, with relationships. Why is it a wake-up call? Because I think we have to start thinking in terms of who am I, uh, what is my, the purpose of my life, right? what do I hope to achieve in my 80 or 90 years on, on this world. Right? Uh, if, uh, you know, I, I sometimes say, I've attended many people in the last days of life. Never have I heard anybody say, my only regret is that I haven't spent more time in the office. So when we have it very comfortable, when we live a life too safe, too secure, we become very complacent. The progression of the mind stagnates. You become very dull, you become very anxious, don't know how to go through life, and yet on paper you have everything. You have a good career, you have a relationship with someone, you have money, you have material belongings, yet there's something still missing in you. And a wake-up call is a spiritual one, precisely when you start to question everything and are ready to hear the uncomfortable truths of life. I'm out. I'm done. Why, what, how, when? Asking simple questions to the complex matters. Right? It doesn't happen, right? Because what happens is that when people look at their life retrospectively, they realize that they left out many of their values of a life. Well, why don't we become wiser right? when we're in a time where we can do something about it instead of when we're, when we're terminal? Right? I'll be honest with you. Personally, this exact thing that he mentioned 
about having regret of not living a fulfilling life is one of my biggest fears exactly why i couldn't keep up with the rat race in the back of my mind i always thought that there's something else something more to life than just go to work come home eat your food go to sleep restart and make same things over and over again until you get retired and after just a couple of weeks you fall down and wither away because there's no need in you anymore the thing people tie their egos to and cannot live without being in demand so i think that the uh, fact that we have lived so much of a commercial life industrialized uh, and i'm not going to be i'm not going to pitch religion because Unfortunately, there's been a lot of drawbacks in organized religion and people have lost faith in organized religion. But I wrote a book about spirituality where I said spirituality can stand independent of religion. That is exactly why I was appealed by spirituality. And I don't mean in this magical and woo-woo manner. I always see spirituality as something rational. There's a clear explanation to everything that is happening in universe. And spirituality can be reasoned and can explain how things hang together. For me, spirituality is connecting all of the body parts into becoming a core essence without any identification, without any physical form. Connecting your mind, connecting your emotional mental state into becoming one soul or whatever you want to call it spirituality is when your mind and body is in synchronized state spirituality means being the best human being that you can right meaning thinking about uh, a purpose in life because animals can't do that only human beings can do it thinking about how you can improve yourself and become a better person animals don't seek to improve themselves Trying to help others, strangers, animals don't do that, right? Being able to delay gratification, being able to make moral decisions, what's right and what's wrong, right? Animals can't do that. Animals are driven by their body. If, if the animal wants something, it has to go get it. And it can't think whether it's right or wrong, right? As we become more whole and understand more what life is about, we see our connection with other beings and being the leaders of consciousness on this planet. We have to make sure to create a great environment for living, not just for humans, but all beings. Virtue and compassion are pillars for spirituality. And the funny thing is, whenever you become whole in yourself, it's not like you push yourself into helping others and becoming virtuous and compassionate and empathic. It comes from you naturally. You want to strengthen your hand and help thy neighbor so I pointed out there are so many things that are unique about the human being and I take all of those 12 or 13 or 14 uniquenesses put them together and I says this is the human spirit and that is what makes us different than animals now if you implement all of these things then you are implementing the spirit and you are being spiritual right? and one can be spiritual and have a feeling of self-worth of being a spiritual being Right? without even having a belief in God or being in any religion. There's no need for someone to tell you how to live your life in a moral and virtuous way. If someone leads your actions, that's not genuine. That's not you being truthful with yourself and your neighbor. You're just parroting stuff because some wise man told you that what you're doing is very good and you will be praised and awarded in a different life. Me personally, I think that this life is what we have and we have to create heaven on earth by living a righteous life, by helping thy neighbor, by becoming first and foremost the best version of yourself because that's the only way you can help others. The time has come when we have to stop and ponder what we really live for. Although the distractions are ever more present in our lives, with everything happening and going on in the world, we have to make a deliberate choice to disassociate ourselves from external noise when you become whole when you find your essence you will be on your way to reach your highest potential people make everything to end pain but they do nothing to avoid suffering which only will happen if you choose to look inside of yourself. No broken people can help others. The first life that you have to rescue is your own. And the most powerful thing with that is that you will be leading by example. Help you, help me. Osein, out.